I grew up performing live, mostly playing classical music, doing like piano concerts and stuff like that. Eventually out of high school started a band and for me the best times I had in the first years of that band were when we could totally black out on stage. Like you're holding your nose and you slip like under the bath water. You know, you're having that like deep sort of like sensory deprivation, like meditation type thing. As I got a little bit older, I became more and more interested in the eccentricities of my body, trying to love it more and let my body do what felt good on stage. Now it's just kind of taken over. I would say that like two out of 10 times I have to like prime the engine, but eight out of 10 times it just moves. You know, I don't think about it anymore. Just try to like sink into the song and the rest happens. I'm Joe from American Trappist and we're recording our new song in the end for Shaking Through. Love and happiness. session as American Trappist, I was joined by Shane Luckenball on drums, Louis Devonzo on bass, and Max Kolek on guitar. Do me a favor. So can you hold the one end of this on the, like, the middle of the snare drum? And then I'm going to have you hold it against this. Joe's enormously capable of writing a song, singing on it, making every decision. And I detect that he's in a stage of his life where he is excited to let people take things and run with them. Okay, see this is, yeah, this yeah. is where we got confused. Okay, so what, what's the uh, like logical place to start? I love working with other people and I think I have an ear for production, but I've got a long way to go as an engineer and so I've just been trying to work on that. I grew up playing classical music and became interested in arrangement and production, doing my own stuff, and always knew that I could do some work for other people if I had the opportunity. My wife and I, I was sitting in our house, and I think just bring in songwriters who are like 60% of the way there, and you know, helping them get a better idea of what they want the song or the record to be, and then helping them get there. That's really fun for me. In a lot of ways, that's a real producer. A real producer is like longing for the new experience and the new collaborative epiphanies. Being at Minor Street was great because I've produced everything that my band has put out. And I went into this process just knowing that I, I didn't want to fill that role. I had ideas and Brian and I talked about those ideas but um, I wanted to have a different experience, and it was just the best. It was so good to just like be in the band and, and not think about anything else. That's the idea, right? So that's, that was it from the middle to the end? Yeah. yeah. What's that? Is it too long in the middle? No, not at all. I would say try to stitch it all together and do a whole pass and we'll listen to it. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah. So for this recording, you probably will notice a creepy white mannequin head in a lot of shots. We've been experimenting with binaural recording. Basically, it's just the concept of microphones put in a certain position, usually like within a head shape, to kind of like emulate the frequency response and just general like stereo image of human ears. In most cases, what you get with that is like an incredibly natural sound. For years, our approach to capturing a room sound was to try to create like a better version of the room than the actual room itself. 
it sounds lush and it sounds huge and it sounds pumpy. And so it's nice to start playing with the binaural mics because what you capture is this room. If you were standing in it, it would sound exactly like this. So that's fun to play with. You guys, come yeah, come check it out. It's, it's pretty great. My only slight fear is, does it actually really like get too speedy by the end? Yeah, I feel like we were really pushing it. I feel like we sped up right when the three of us started playing together. I thought it jumped late. Really. I think something of the vibe though is this sort of like coolness that if it gets speedy, it might be a little too speed, like peppy. I also, I mean, also vocally, I, I'd like to get a little like cartoony with it. Like, yeah, yeah. And if it speeds up, then you can do it that like a little lend, better. It yeah. like lends to that. For okay. Me to be, uh, oh, That's great. Like uh -huh. that kind of like stuff. Like kind of like Elvisy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but like a little more like like Elvis, like from hell. Yeah. You know, like, uh -huh. like that kind of. Elvis. Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's what you got. That when you guys do your secret shows, you'll play as Elvis. That's right. I'm interested in that. I'm interested in being a cartoon on stage. I think sometimes it's just the most interesting way to express something that's really, you know, troubling you, is through this imaginary voice or character. Just to have some sort of music or art like take you outside of real life for a second, that's, that's really special to me. What more could happen to like confessional songwriting? except for to put it in this sort of imaginary land with these cartoon characters expressing something that's just a little bit larger than life. Yo, wait, wait. You said both your volumes are all the way up? Yes. Does one pickup sound better than the other? Um. Not really, but when one pickups off, the other one buzzes. Keep both hot. Okay. <laughs> so for Louis Space, one thing that both Brian and I have been interested in is figuring out a way to get a grittier, like less pristine and like classically good sounding bass amp tone. One of the things that we always do is put the U67 on the bass amp. So I decided to put a dynamic microphone, which is an AKG D112, really close to the speaker, kind of off to the side. And it handled the mid-range a lot better than the 67. I ended up using a combo of the two in the mix. If I can hear both things, like one that I'm very familiar with and the one that I'm not familiar with, it's like far more productive comparison, you know, because it's the sound I know versus the sound I don't, like what's different, what's the same. I can kind of like catalog that and like save it for later in my head. So on the U67, we had that going through the Dizengoff D4 into our Gates SA39. For the D112 on the bass amp, I ran that just through an MCI console preamp into a Worm Audio 1176. Yeah, let's just go with the first one. Cool, cool. Yeah, what do we do next? Do we, but let's do a scratch vocal that has no like room in it. That way we can know how tight we can make things. You know what I mean? Okay. And then we'll do your guitar. Maybe just do a double of your whole guitar. I mean that we could we could use instead if you want in spots. Cool. And but then in some spots it'll just be a double. Cool. And also there was uh, Max said he wants me to try the solo part with the acoustic instead of the. Electric. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that next too. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Might as well. Yeah, and I put it on myself, and yeah, I know that you helped, but if we're gonna hold somebody responsible, everyone knows what we did. We were just kids being kids, I guess, but it's left me vulnerable. I found out when I first started writing songs that like some sort of new experience, a, a lot of times being a place or a experience with a human being, which is so dynamic and so many different ways can like bring the song to life. As far as I go and as far as Leanne goes, I think we were both still finding ourselves and we're considered by the group of people that we hung out with to be a little like unstable. I think that group of people as a whole are always going to see me and see her as the people we were at that point in time. Yeah, 
I guess that's why I wrote the song, you know, to say like, if nobody else knows the difference between who you were and who you are now, I, I do. I recognize that and that's inspiring to me. But it was hard. I felt like even when I talked to her and I let her know that I had written this song and what I had written it about, it's never going to do as good of a job as just saying like, hey, here's, here's the song. I don't know what it'll mean to other people, because for me it's still like this weird little letter I wrote to like a friend I had in a past life. So he went about playing his acoustic guitar through his pedals, through his Vox Bruno amp, and immediately were shocked by the quality of the tones we were getting. Just really good. What's really, I think, unique about a, an acoustic guitar for some people is the degree to which they get sort of like percussive feedback from it. You know, you hit it hard and you feel like an oak, but maybe you don't feel with an electric guitar. Even down to like the insane feedback section in the middle of the song. That was completely what it was because it was a nylon string classical acoustic guitar plugged through his pedal board. to get in front of the amp so it would be even more yeah. like, you know. I like the way the feed, the high feedback Yeah, plays with, with the that. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's cool, it's cool. Noisier music is closer to real life, you know? It's unpredictable and, and full of things that you invite and, and don't invite into your reality. There's nothing about life that's really, truly clean or well organized. As soon as you start to feel stable, it just like rips the carpet up from underneath you. And um, maybe the song goes that way. It starts to get a little out of control just, just when we thought we were doing okay. The end, I put it on myself. Are you trying to give it a shot? I know that you helped, but if we're gonna hold somebody right, responsible. Try, yeah. Wanna do it? Yeah, let's try one. Right. Cool. So just let me know if anything's weird in the phones. Cool. But it should be relatively good. Cool. You know, it came time to track the actual lead vocal. I had the U67 into the AML EZ1073 into the LA2A, which is a very standard chain for me. Now I don't know where you are, but if it matters, I'm sorry I was so inconsiderate. I honestly don't feel like Joe's vocals necessarily need to be comped. Like, he has these performances, and like, each one is slightly different. Each one is like, kind of even seems like he's like interpreting the story in like a slightly different way. Whatever one you pick, they're all gonna be incredible. And I like, really admire that. Love and happiness. There's a lot of music I want to make, a lot of music that I'm interested in making and interested in the sound of and production techniques and songwriting techniques, but I'm really afraid of making something that I don't like. I figure the best way to avoid that is just to like be myself, you know, as opposed to like trying to please someone or make a specific type of work. You look back on yourself and yeah, you don't like love all the previous versions of yourself, but if you're being honest about it and you're making work that's honest about it, then like, it's okay. It's just like everything else is in the past. It just is how it is. I think a part of me is still feeling like it would be better off if I just like didn't say anything at all, but that's probably everything that, that I make or that a lot of people make. You know, you've got to like create friction between like loving your work and feeling like you're not worthy enough to make it. That creates like a pretty exciting result, I think. Max could go bluesy for days and with ease. I just thought it was really cool to try to steer away from roadhouse bluesiness. My inclination would be to think like, in your part, avoid bluesy roadhouse rock until the middle break. And like, 
you're doing the like thummy jun 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 jun. So that is bluesy all the way. Yeah. That would be building on top of the sort of like inherent bluesiness of the song as it was. And instead to just sort of offset it with like a completely different direction. Also, I know it's not very kraut rock, but if we are like desperate for a part, you could always just do that thing I was like doing on the guitar that do 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 Dude, maybe that's exactly what we want. What is that part? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Be, uh... Joe, it turns out, had this melody. It's so weird, even from that extension down. Oh, so just those. I was definitely experimenting with some of those those six Joes. And Max turned it into a more chordal delivery. <laughs> Part turned into a really excellent, really important riff in the song. Doubling it with the acoustic guitar and then eventually Shane's vocals makes it this like moment that just when you're all fully convinced that this is one type of song, this thing comes in. That just says like, oh, it's not, it's something else. And I, I really love that. I don't know, it surprised me how like easy it was. It was very natural. I think Brian has made the song more interesting and has helped us find what we were looking for in the song. And I like don't want to produce my own stuff anymore. It's nice. It's I feel like I have a better perspective on it from this side. Joe writes these songs that are really real. And I also like the fact that he's really willing to tell us what they're about. I truly think most music doesn't have enough of that. What really comes out is going to be a song that has just as much potential 20 years from now, even 100 years from now, as it does today. Tell the truth for once and forever. It's not that I didn't care. I think I've always been scared of whatever would have happened if we stayed together snow. I think when you have such skilled, competent musicians and engineers working, that you can trust we're all sort of working towards this higher goal. There's this magic character in this magic band and this magic record that is not totally based in reality. And so we're all trying to like make the puppet come to life. Oh, I wish you love and happiness. Weather Vane's Shaking Through series exists to support self-expression through the creative process of making and recording music. To download the multi-tracks recorded for this or any episode of Shaking Through, or to learn about Weather Vane Music, the nonprofit that produces this series, you can follow the links on the screen or go to weathervanemusic.org. I wouldn't let you down a second time. I know you know how it is, it's getting harder to live with myself And I'd like to apologize I want the chance to cry to look you in the eye I tell the truth for once and forever It's not that I didn't care, I think I've always been scared Or whatever would have happened if we stayed together So now I'm holding on to the memory So many days I wish it never had come to this And if you ever think of me Above all, I wish you love and happiness. I hope you find what you're looking for.